You know, I have to think that my biggest challenge today is to not lose my temper. Um, it, the facts that are underlying this hearing are so egregious that it is hard not to get emotional about it. Um, but I know that our witnesses that are here today are here to help us understand why this has occurred and hopefully um, enhance our ability to look at this problem in a reasonable and rational way that protects patients in this country. The American pharmaceutical industry leads the world in innovation, and we rightly prize a system that allows discovery of medicines that save and improve lives. But it's imperative that we find out if that system is being taken advantage of by companies or individuals that seek deep profits while contributing little or nothing to advances in medical treatment through aggressive research and development. To me, there's a line at which these huge price increases on prescription drugs go from rewarding innovation to price gouging. In July, I had the chance at a hearing to question another pharmaceutical executive, Howard Schiller of Valiant Pharmaceuticals. About an 820% price increase his company took in February of 2015 after acquiring another off-patent drug called Isopril which is used to treat cardiac arrest in a hospital setting. When I asked Mr. Schiller at that hearing in, in a different committee how Valiant could justify such an increase on Isopril, a drug to which no improvements had been made post-acquisition, Mr. Schiller could only tell me that Valiant had conducted a, quote, complex analysis and had concluded that the drug was previously, quote, significantly underpriced, end of quote. He further asserted that such a price increase on a Valiant drug was an anomaly. Following that hearing, I submitted questions for the record to Mr. Schiller requesting additional information from Valiant regarding the company's decision to hike the price of Isopril so dramatically, as well as information on Valiant's 312% increase on another off-patent drug called Nitropress, which is also used to treat cardiac arrest. In response, Valiant refused to answer my questions and instead downplayed my concerns. This year alone, Valiant raised prices on its brand name drugs an average of 66%, about five times as much as its closest industry peers. These price increases come at a time when Americans are more worried than ever about the affordability of prescription drugs. And what Daraprim, Isopril, Nitopress, and the other drugs in our investigation have in common is they do not have market competition from generic alternatives. There is no market. Are you able to, you talked about compounding, are you able to work on compounding to provide some competition to these drugs? And does that, are there the same barriers on compounding that there is on getting a generic approved? No, because a compounder can, you know, just put out the drug. And, and this is not our optimal way of doing things. This was just a, an egregious situation that we needed to deal with quickly because, as, as we've heard, people were getting hurt. And so we found a way to get in a compound pharmacy to sell it for $1. Um, and, you know, that's what we do. We have 60,000 pharmacies in our network. We know all of them. We know what they all can do. We saw an opportunity here and took it to help us get us through this particular situation. But for compounding, they don't have all the restrictions that FDA does. Um, it would be great if they did go through all that, but for this particular situation, we simply monitored the sites, monitored how these drugs are being produced for safety and so forth, for high standards, and then made the decision to go forth. We're paying attention. Let me, the word go out to investors in hedge funds. We're paying attention to this practice. How many other potential drugs are there out there that a hedge fund could buy, put a new label on it, and increase the price 6,000%? We're, we're trying to clarify the final number, but it could be a couple of hundred with small populations. So it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. a significant problem, but it's a targeted management Yeah, you have to problem. hit on all cylinders, Yes, right? It has to be off patent. It has to be a relatively small market that won't attract immediately a generic competitor. Right, right. So it's, you know, it could be a, you know, a couple hundred drugs, but the population is still pretty low and manageable. We when the price of your medication quadruples, you don't care whether the folks looking into it are Republicans or Democrats. You just want somebody to fight for you.
The best answers are likely to be found when many people are asking questions. And Senator Collins and I both think that this is an area that deserves more scrutiny from Congress, the media, and the American public.